Hi everybody, it's Robert Earl out here at the Eco Ranch Sustainable Living Educational Center in far west Texas with a vlog, a much <clears throat> a late vlog, but it's a vlog. Cascade the Wonder Dog isn't out here because I'm at the new campsite and it is very, very well, this vlog is going to be really chopped up. I'm already chopping it, as you can see. Uh, the reason is I took several days off from when I started it, and I think I said a little bit too much about the other campsites, so I'm going to cut it out a bit. Uh, but I do want to get into uh, showing you some of the things we're going to be doing. The, um, the money that I did get uh, is allowing us to start a whole bunch of projects we really need to get going. One is going to be the bathhouse and finishing the new campground. The other one, um, which will also give them water and um, a flush toilet, water and showers. Now over here, we have all that, but we don't have running water yet. So I'm working here right now on building a water tower. Uh, and I'll show that, and I'll show it finished in the next vlog. But simply all I've done is I've gone up about... I didn't measure it, something like about 11 feet up in the air, and I'm going to put three 60-gallon blue plastic water uh, bar barrels up there, tie the three barrels together, 180 gallons of water, I'll have a way of filling it easily enough um, uh, from down here, and I'll just carry 180 gallons of water at a time up to fill this and it'll be a gravity feed into the travel trailer as opposed to having a pump and all that. I didn't want the extra maintenance and I didn't want to have to trust the campers to remember to turn the pump off all the time so I thought gravity feed would be better. It's what I'm working on now, designing, trying to work out the stresses on having that much weight up. Get that done, I'll show you in the next vlog, but that's one of the many things we're doing uh, out here. The big thing is really getting that campsite ready. I'm trying to get it ready by spring break, which is very, very soon. This will be done by spring break. Show you a couple other things I've been working on. However, you and I are out here in a spot where I've never been and I've never done any of our videos. In fact, I've, very, I've spent very little time out here. This is the back end of my property, the south end of our property. It's the other side of the main arroyo. I think, I'm not sure if you can see the house. I'm sure you can see the, um, the camper up at the other campground. But um, it's 12 acres of arroyo, and then we have roughly five acres, maybe, maybe six acres on this side of the arroyo. Uh, that we don't use, and we don't use it because it is low and it gets wet. Uh, some of it sheet floods if it rains, so we just haven't used any of this. We didn't need it. It's just kind of a buffer for many potential neighbors. But it's so flat and so pretty out here, that, uh, and we've had such a great um, response from Hip Camp and people that use Hip Camp, that I thought, why not expand the campground a little bit? I didn't really want to take it too close to the main house, so I had all this down here. Let's do this and let's make it a little bit cheaper because it's not as desirable. It's a long way away from us and, and I had thought it would be a long way away from the amenities. Well, you can't build a campground out here without having a toilet. I mean, who wants to walk a half a mile to use the toilet? What they'll end up doing is crapping in the arroyo. So, I decided to build a, um, um, a toilet. Well, if I'm going to build a toilet, I started looking around. Yeah, yeah. All right, we'll build a toilet. We'll build a shower and a sink. Well, then I've got to have a little cabinet for supplies, you know, toilet paper, paper towels, and things down here. So we're going to build, and I'm going to step back here, right about where I'm standing, where I've got these pieces of utility pole. We're going to build an 8x10 bathhouse, essentially. Toilet, shower, sink. Uh, the most economical way, using stuff we have around here, was to use these old... Uh, utility poles as a footing, a foundation, so that it would be up off the ground a little bit. So uh, that's what these are doing here. I've got to set these, and that'll be in the next couple days. The biggest thing was, and I didn't realize this, so if any of you have seen a video where I mentioned that we don't have um, uh, a lot of regulations about septic in this county, apparently I'm mistaken. We do have to have a... We, uh, uh, you cannot have a cesspool or a pit toilet anymore. That's the, the short answer to it. So then I'm, I'm uh, left with a question, well, what do I do? Well, you really don't want to do a septic system here. So what I've done is I've got a holding tank. 
And I've buried a holding tank in the ground here. It'll hold the stuff. And I have already a grinder pump that you would use like in your basement or if something's lower than your septic system. The to, to, to grinder pump grinds up the, uh, the poop and sends it up where it flows. So I have a grinder pump, a portable grinder pump. So I'll just come every once a year maybe because it's a big tank. I'll come once a year and pump it into 55 gallon drums and then put it into our main septic system which is it's huge and it can handle it. Uh, so that solved that issue. But let me show you what I'm doing with the dam because I had to fix the dam. Uh, you may have seen in other videos uh, or vlogs that we had the dam. The dam was holding water. It was doing great except it wasn't built the way I wanted. I had said build it flat across and it was built with three smiles. I called them smiles because they had low spots. Those low spots were way too low. And although the water never overtopped, what happened is it got so close to the top that the pressure from the weight pushed the top out and blew the dam out anyway. I, with that piece of equipment, I rebuilt it correctly. It's actually flat across, but it's also up higher than the ground I'm standing on here, which is what I needed it to be level to. So I've actually raised it up higher, made it thicker, and then to keep it from blowing out on the part that blew out the easiest, I'm throwing all these tires I had from the Earthship project up against the back of the dam. So if there is water that comes and slaps on, on it, the water is going to hit those tires and it'll, it'll we're hoping, will prevent a blowout. Now, am I positive? No. Because as an old friend of mine, and I haven't seen her in a while, as she was a retired college professor, as she told me, this whole area is littered with the remains of dams that people thought they could build a dam. In fact, I've often teased about that fellow two and a half miles to my uh, south south uh, east who um, dammed up an arroyo he had, and he was going to have jet ski rentals and races. Well, it blew out. Uh, it blew out at a three-inch rainfall. Mine didn't blow out until we had a four inch rainfall, but it blew out because, as I said, it was a little bit too low there. It didn't overtop, it just, it just the pressure pushed it out. So I fixed that. I'd like to show you what I did, so I'll get behind the camera. Just for reference, there's the main compound and the travel trailer at the, uh, at the uh, existing campsite. Right there is my ramp going down into, uh, into this end of the arroyo here. And what I've done is you can see we just just put the dam straight across thickened it up quite a bit and I'm taking those tires and just laying the tires all up against there now yes it looks like hell and it will for a year until we get three four five rainstorms in um, of course I'm not going to leave them on the top of the dam like that I was moving them with the tractor and it got a flat tire uh, so I have to now move the rest of them which is probably 200 tires there's only about 400 total uh, we're going to move them just on this section of the dam this was the problem child because the water f first comes down here then it goes to the other section over there so i think if we just have this as a shock absorber that'll work um, and again the dam is not designed to uh, hold water to have jet ski races or um, uh, even to provide you know, drinking water, I could probably pump it out for the greenhouse if I needed some. But it's mainly just to create a habitat, kind of a desert wetland. If it'll hold the water, it'll create a desert wetland so that um, the animals can come around. Uh, we have another fellow who is somewhere about, oh, let's see, that direction. And I won't get into too much about him, but... Um, he dug a whole bunch of holes on his property uh, to re-green the desert. Well, then he decided, oh, wait a minute, I don't like donkeys. They come and they, uh, they drink my water. So he's now built an electrified fence around his property to keep the donkeys and the other animals out. So um, they have to get water somewhere. Um, and they're part of the desert uh, culture out here. So they can, uh, they can, they can come and get water here. And I don't mind if they put a few footprints in it. They have very light footprints anyway. So that's the dam. That's the new campground. Let's go on to some of the other things I'm doing. Well, also, we were able to um, order all the lumber we need to build the inside wall here in the master suite. 
just the inside wall, which I had to redesign because of these issues with my legs, we are going to actually make it out of wood so that it's easier on me because we don't know how much longer uh, or how much worse my legs will get while we're working. So we're going to do the inside wall out of uh, lumber. The outside wall will still be one layer of rock, but it'll be attached to the wall of um, the inside walls. And at some point, we're going to use a double two by four wall in, in a couple of places. I'll show videos on that, but we are, the lumber's all coming this week. We're going to, I'm going to get the water lines run, the sewer line uh, set up, everything set up so that we can finish the bedroom, the master bedroom, which of course will finally box this in after 10 years. So we'll have this all boxed in. The turret will be the last thing I do out here, but the turret will get built. So, um, and that'll be over the summer. That's another thing we're starting to do right now. It'll be more videos. There's going to be a lot of small videos of some of the smaller projects that I have going on. Not much sense in trying to talk over all that, is there? But... Our little goat now is about, uh, she's pushing a month old, gained a lot of weight, she's doing very well, and we're getting quite a bit of milk off of her mother because she's a singlet instead of two or three. The other two, this one here, is ready to explode any day now, and I believe walking over here, up oh, we can't see her, there you can just see her head. We think, we think she's in labor right now, so we put her in there, she may be in labor. Uh, of course, that's going to mean two more for Debbie to milk, and she doesn't want me to milk them. She says, I'm going to do it myself. So uh, we'll have several young babies, and hopefully that'll be in a, in a video very, very soon, like a day or two. And we have more of the Mozambique tilapia coming this week. Uh, we just didn't have enough in here to have this thing run the way it's supposed to, so I had to get a couple hundred more tilapia. Uh, the ones that we have had are alive. Most of them made it through the winter. They're doing uh, okay. They're out now swimming around and eating things to the heating system that we've already done. And more of the same going on in here. I know I've left off several things because I've literally, the reason it took me several days from when I started this down in the uh, new campground to today was I've been doing a lot of planning and diagramming and trying to figure out what we're going to build and what we're going to do and I'll be showing it all to you as we go along but for now this is the end of this vlog I know it was a bit fragmented I'm posting I'm posting this first and then right after a video on our new cheese cave uh, so if you um, if you're thinking about getting into cheese making and just have some doubts about some aspects of it particularly how are you going to eat your cheese that video is for you so until um, until that video and the one after that, I guess it's Robert Earl out here at the Eco Ranch, the State of Living Educational Center in Far West Texas, on a 70 degree day in a 90 degree greenhouse. Saying, see you later.